If you've ever peed yourself during a ruck march, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Guys, like and comment. Uh, I especially want to hear from my Army and Marine Corps friends if you have peed yourself during a ruck march. <laughs> Any stories from a ruck march? Very interested. If you're not sure what a ruck march is, uh, you put on a heavy backpack and you walk. It sounds fun until you do it. Guys, the comment section is amazing, and I'd highly recommend that you get down there. I don't know what I've done to deserve them, but they're here, and we're going to love them. If you guys are wondering how to support the channel, the biggest supporter of our channel right now is Big Daddy Unlimited. So to thank them, get in there. What's it like? It's like the Costco of the gun world. Cheap products if you subscribe, you know, buy in. Otherwise, you know, the guy's going to be there checking the, <laughs> the front entrance. So is it worth it? It depends. Uh, do you spend any money on gun products? If you do, it's probably going to be worth it. If not, you're probably going to be angry, and you'll send me an angry email, and we'll talk about it a little bit. If you're looking for ammunition, you have LAX ammo, and of course, for sick plaid and bags and all that kind of stuff, we have Vertex. So get in there, check those out. Discount code Garantham is like 25% off at Vertex, so get out there. Ladies, gentlemen, attack helicopters, MG42s, and of course, my often forgotten, but not by me, SKS rifles. Welcome to the channel. Today we're going to be talking about a very interesting rifle, but you might not think it when you just look at it, and that is going to be the M the LMT uh, series of rifles. So they're made by LMT, and there's a lot of different products that they make, but I wanted to take a minute to talk about them. By minute, I mean this entire video. Um, before we get into this particular rifle, let's talk about my relationship with LMT. Uh, disclosure, if you're not familiar with my channel, is a very important part of how I run this thing. So. You know, what was my relationship to the company? What did they do to get this video made? Well, they sent me the rifle along with the ammunition to test it, specifically around 6,000 rounds, including 1,000 rounds of, um, of Mark 262. So this is very typical of any of the reviews I do on rifles. Uh, my reviews are not in any way influenced by, you know, getting a rifle or getting ammunition or anything like that, because I have, you know, I, I it's just typical for me. So. I like to think I'm non-biased despite any of that stuff, but for those of you who wonder, that is my relationship with the company. Beyond that, I talk to them. I will likely be doing more reviews on the rifles that they offer because I, ha I am impressed with this first um, one that they have sent me. So we'll talk more about that in the future. Now, regarding the Lewis and Machine Tool rifle that I have right here, these are very interesting. So they are military tested and combat proven rifles. Um, there is a version of this rifle that is currently in use by the New Zealand Armed Forces. And as we know, those guys are psychopaths and awesome. So if they do something, there's probably a good reason for it. Also, there is the same rifle, but with the piston conversion, which is very simple to do, that is in use by the Estonian Defense Forces. So understand that this rifle has been adopted over many larger manufacturers, such as H&K, um, to be the rifle of choice of a couple armed forces. So why was it chosen? Well, in this video, we're going to delve into that. And we're going to talk a little bit about this rifle. So we're going to do what we normally do. We're going to go tip to butt, <laughs> tip to butt, and we're going to um, go down this rifle and we're going to talk about every feature and about how it feels to shoot and get into it as much as we can. So to start off with, um, all my rifles are set up um, as I shoot them and use them and all that kind of stuff. So. You know, I'm sure there's going to be somebody who's going to hop on there and be like, what do you need? Why don't you take all that crap off the rifle? It's like, okay, cool. Good story, bro. So starting at the tip here, nothing really amazing. We have a A2 birdcage flash hider. Now those do work fairly well. In fact, I like them quite a bit. Um, a lot of people are quick to kind of be like, oh, the A2 sucks or something like that. No, it does very well. For what it was meant to do, it, it simply directs the gases back in your shoulder, does an okay job at flash suppression, and doesn't kick up dirt when you're in the prone. So I'm a fan of them. Now, if you do choose to get the New Zealand reference rifle, the rifle that was chosen by the New Zealand Armed Forces, um, there will be a Surefire War Comp as opposed to the A2 Birdcage. So let that be known right there. Moving back to the barrel, um, 
the barrels are made from blanks that they have, they're cryogenically treated, and in my experience, they've been exceptionally accurate. They are chrome lined. Um, I've been getting anything from anywhere from you know 0.8 to around 1.2 MOA, uh, depending on the ammunition that I used. Um, this particular rifle, which has an 11 and a half inch barrel, really liked the Mark 262 ammunition and shot that incredibly well. I've had really good results with surplus Serbian um, M193 and M855. Uh, M855A1 as well, so all those ammunitions have worked very well in this particular rifle. Um, the barrel is like a medium contour. It's not quite as um, heavy as like the SOCOM profile of barrels that I'm a big fan of, but it's getting pretty close, and despite it not being that super heavy profile that I like, the medium contour is awesome. A lot of companies are going with those really lightweight barrels, and there can be some problems with those as far as ability to deal with heat and a couple other issues so i do appreciate the fact that they've used a medium contour barrel now speaking of barrels i have to talk about barrel swaps so what's really cool about the lmt's um, rifles is that swapping a barrel is very very simple it, it basically comes up to taking out these two hex keys and then pulling the barrel out and that's pretty much it. Now, there is a problem. The barrel nut itself um, will not come out if I have something like a light mounted onto the um, M-lock surfaces right here. So that's the only downside you do have to take that off. Now, of course, you have the Picatinny. It comes off no problem. Now, what's really cool is kind of what I mentioned earlier about Estonia uses the piston system. Well, if you wanted to take this rifle and convert it to a piston-driven LMT rifle, all you have to do is pull the barrel out, the entire gas system comes out, pop out the bolt carrier group, put in the piston bolt carrier group, put in the barrel with the piston system, and you now have yourself a piston rifle. Simple as that. And a very good piston rifle at that, and we'll be talking about that in a future review. So that system is incredibly, incredibly useful, not just for switching operating systems um, for a variety of environments that you might be in, but also for switching barrel lengths and calibers. So really innovative in my opinion, and I've been a huge fan of that system. I've done it a couple of times with different barrels, and in each case, it took me maybe two minutes to swap the barrel out. And that was because I went slow. So really good on them, a really excellent design. All right, moving from talking about the barrel, let's talk about the handguard. The handguard is, without a doubt, probably one of the best handguards to mount an IR laser. The big thing you want with a handguard is a handguard that is going to be strong enough so that it doesn't lose zero when it's knocked or anything like that, where you know it doesn't allow rotation to happen, and then you lose a zero on your IR laser, whether it be from LA5, PEC15, D-Ball, whatever you have. I would definitely rate this up there with things like the Geisley Mark 8, the um, Daniel Defense Wrist 2, all of which are incredibly strong rails. Now, what makes this rail so strong is if you look here, there's actually no attachment there. It's actually all one solid piece. It is what is called a monolithic upper. It was all machined from one piece. That makes it exceptionally strong and also allows the barrel to just be naturally free floated because of that design. Now, the drawback to that is that you can't swap out handguards on these systems because the entire upper is the handguard. So you are stuck with what you have. Uh, that's not so much a problem. I think M-Lock is gonna be around for quite a while. And if you're a guy who can drop the kind of money that an LMT costs, it's likely not going to be an issue for you. And even if it is, things like Picatinny, which have been around forever, are still in use. So even if you were to get like one with Picatinny, you're gonna be fine. Picatinny is gonna be around for a long time because it's a very strong mounting uh, platform. Now regarding the handguard itself, um, it is a little bit thicker and a little bit stronger than the BCM. And I've been a huge fan of the BCM rails. Now, despite that, it still feels very similar to the BCM rails, a little bit heavier, but I am a huge fan of this handguard. I really love the way it feels due to its smaller diameter. It's just very easy to grip, um, get my hands on all the controls that I need on my various accessories and LARPing stuff that I have on here. So I've been a huge fan of the handguard. Now on this particular handguard, I know you guys are gonna ask, I do have um, BCM rail panels as well as a BCM kinesthetic angled grip, which was designed by Travis Haley, who is not my father. So we have our monolithic upper receiver. Now let's move to one of the really interesting parts of the system, which is the bolt carrier group and bolt. Now on this particular rifle right here, I have the standard bolt carrier because I wanted to shoot it with both, and this is what I have in right now. But I was also sent the enhanced bolt carrier group and bolt from uh, Lewis Machine and Tool. 
So when it comes to the um, enhanced bolt carry group and all that kind of stuff, I don't profess at all to be an expert of arms or anything of the sort. Um, I think I do an okay job at reviewing. Now, when it comes to the LMT enhanced bolt carrier group, I don't think there's a better expert out there than Chris from Small Arm Solutions. If you haven't followed his channel or read his stuff, I'd highly recommend it. The man is infinitely knowledgeable on a variety of uh, weapons platforms, especially on the M16 and M4 family of rifles, including the LMT. So he has a great write-up on, on his site uh, detailing the enhanced bolt carrier group from LMT, and I think it's gonna do a much better job than I ever could. I am going to, however, attempt to sum it up for you to some extent or another. So when it comes to the enhanced bolt carrier group, essentially they were trying to correct a variety of problems that SOCOM was having at the time with their M4 series of rifles. So it was designed to work specifically with carbine gas systems. However, it does wonders for any gas system out there. So what it has is you have sand dirt relief grooves, you have a modified cam track that allows for better extraction by slowing down unlocking. You have gas exhaust ports modified to vent gases so that they're not so much as not coming out into the inside of the receiver. You have an enhanced extractor, specifically a lobster tail extractor that uses two extractor springs and a more aggressive extractor. And you have the bolt lugs stress relieved and you have more case support among a variety of other things. What this all does is they hit reliability from a variety of ways, both in extraction in timing and everything. And you come out with probably in my opinion, one of the best, if not the best bolt carrier groups currently on the market. And it's been around for a little bit. So when it comes to those, if you can get your hands on them, absolutely get your hands on them. They're always sold out because they are so sought after. But that is one bolt carrier group that is going to survive for a long time that was designed to survive the rigors of just anything that you can possibly throw at it, possibly even the Marine Corps. Now that we've talked a lot about the upper, let's take a moment to talk about the lower, because if you haven't noticed, uh, the lower is fully ambidextrous, like completely and utterly ambidextrous. This lower um, is different from some of the other lowers I've talked about at this point. And as far as which one you'd want, it really depends on what you're looking for. Uh, I still love the rating, I still love the Knight's Armament lowers, but the Mars lower from LMT definitely sits among my favorites. Now, in my case, I did remove the um, right-sided safety. I really hate safeties that nail into my hand when I'm flip them on and off. I just, if I'm going offhand, I tend to just use my thumb on the same side to actuate it. So I did remove that. That's just my personal pet peeve. It's probably a training issue that I need to work through. But let's go ahead and talk about this. So first off, you have your bolt, your magazine release on your right side. And then of course you have your magazine release on your left hand side right here. So you can release it from either direction. So then on our left hand side, we have the normal stuff. We have our bolt release. We have our bolt hold open right here. Uh, on the opposite side, we also have pretty much the same exact thing mirrored on the right hand side. Um, there's nothing different about it or anything like that. You know, with the American Defense rifles, um, they kind of had that weird lever. So I like that it's pretty much the same on both sides. That way I don't have to, you know, have any new manual of arms or anything like that. Um, big fan of it right there. So uh, as far as ambidextrous lowers go, I would say Mars definitely rates among the best out there. Um, I have heard reports of some people stating that the Mars um, lowers are coming out of spec. I haven't seen any evidence of that from talking to a variety of people, but um, you know, subject to change. Anybody can make mistakes, but I haven't seen anything enough to report and say that, that those uh, facts are substantiated. Everything I've seen from the newer LMTs coming out seems to be pretty high quality, so let that be said. Okay, so now that we've pretty much gone through this, let's talk a little about the lower parts kits. Um, lower parts kits are something that I think are often glossed over. People like to think like a lower parts kit is a lower parts kit is a lower parts kit, right? They're all the same. Um, but the lower parts kits from LMT are exceptional. They're very well made. They're, there's just a lot of attention to detail and there's a lot of quality control that goes through it. Um, talk to a bunch of good people who are in the know about this type of thing and the LMT lower parts kits are very well made and lower parts kits do matter. So if you were looking for one, couldn't recommend them more. Now that we've talked about that, let's get into a couple things um, I don't like about the rifle. Uh, the grip. So the grip is from Ergo. It's made by them for LMT specifically. It has a little LMT logo right there. I think there are better grips out there besides the Ergos. You have Reptilia, Magpul, Bravo Company that have superior grips in my opinion. So that was kind of odd that they use this grip. I mean, it feels good. Um, I just prefer um, 
other grips that are out there. Safety is nice and positive. Sometimes you get lowers that have kind of that mushy safety. I've never been a fan of that, so it feels good. Um, you guys know what's coming next. So the LMT comes with a military two-stage trigger. Let's go ahead and let's give it a little shot here. So I'm gonna go ahead and go set trigger, put your finger right over mine, and let's take a journey to trigger land. I'm never gonna say that again. All right, putting some pressure in there, no take up. Okay, my first stage right there. Good. Release is about six pounds or so. I'm not gonna do a trigger pull weight thing. That's just not my deal, guys, sorry. I'm just gonna kinda guesstimate it out. All right, reset, and forward. Very positive, typical of a mil military type trigger. Okay, going into it, no slack. There we go, get my first stage. Good release. Here's my reset. Nice and positive. Again, no take up, a little bit of creep right there. My first stage, second stage release. Okay, so the trigger feels pretty good. I would definitely say an improvement over, say, a stock Colt trigger, which I think are pretty good, to be honest. Um, not phenomenal, though. So you are paying quite a bit for these types of rifles, and I think that there are better options out there when it comes to triggers. You know, when, when it comes to like a $2,000 rifle or anything going north of that, I typically expect a company to have better triggers out there. And I do understand why they come out with these, mil these uh, military type triggers. They're very reliable. They work very well. But I also want to point out that triggers like Geisley have incredible track records when it comes to reliability and ignition of uh, various military ammos. So I don't think it's an excuse to say that they do a military trigger because they're super reliable, because there are a variety of aftermarket triggers that are equally reliable and that I think provide um, a much better trigger pull overall. Now, that being said, with the variety of other accoutrements and things that you get with the LMT, I'm not gonna put it as a strike against because the trigger actually isn't that bad at all. All right, moving back from there, we have our charging handle. So. With charging handles, you guys know that my favorite charging handle is the Radian uh, Raptor. I think that they're the best out there, especially the small one. But this charging handle is very well made. I have no problems with it. Um, it's very easy to get it from both sides to actuate it. So it's pretty good. I still prefer the Radian Raptor, especially the small Raptor, but it is a good charging handle and I see no need in my case to change it. It works perfectly uh, adequate for the intended purpose for which it was designed. Moving back from there, we have a six position buffer tube right here, along with an LMT SOP mod stock. Talk about the OG right here. Um, these stocks are awesome. I use them quite a bit. I do prefer the BCM stocks a little bit more, um, typically because I don't use any of the storage on here, but these do provide a very nice cheek weld. They're very solid. Um, they're not gonna break on you. They're very well made. And I do prefer the QD sling attachment uh, points that are on the SOP mods more than I do on the um, Bravo Company stocks. Um, speaking of sling points, the handguard does have built-in sling points, which is a huge plus for me. I uh, love it when companies do that. It just makes my life a thousand times easier. Now, with all those th things being said, what does it feel like to shoot? That's a great question. Like most military rifles, when it comes to recoil, it is going to be a little bit sharper than what you'd come to expect from a civilian type plinking AR-15. And the reason for that is a little bit more gas, gives you a little bit more umph to power through all that dirt, debris, and crap that you get in the field, making for a more reliable weapon. So well, the first time you shoot this, you might be like, oh, that kinda, kinda hits a little bit harder than a normal kind of 11.5 that I got from XYZ Company with a smaller gas port. That being said, these are properly gassed for the ammunition for which they were made, specifically full-powered military 5.56. A lot of people will buy these rifles and then they'll cheap out an ammo, which I understand it's tough to you know, buy you know, nicer ammo. But if you buy this and you try to run a bunch of Tula through it, you're probably gonna get it choking on that ammunition a little because it doesn't have enough umph to push that bolt carrier back. Now, on full-powered military brass ammo, this thing does very well. And the recoil pattern is very, very predictable on this, and it's very easy to get used to it and control it and get very fast with this particular rifle. So I'm not gonna knock the recoil at all. It's definitely more tame compared to some of the military um, rifles that I've shot in the past. But just wanted to throw it out there that if the first time you get this, you expect some crazy 
um, Gucci thing. You know, there's a lot of Gucci AR-15s made out there nowadays with zero recoil. That's not what you're gonna get from this because this is designed for a different purpose. So with all those things being said, how does the LMT do? Well, I mean, there's nothing that I can say that the military reports, that the military combat actions have said about this thing um, have already said, right? This is a military proven firearm that does extremely well in a variety of environments that you know powers through dirt grime and it's gonna work when you need it to. If you're looking for this for duty or for you know anything less serious, this is absolutely a rifle that you can trust your life to. So good on them. Uh, you definitely will not be sad if you get this rifle. It's going to last you a very long time. Now, before we go, um, you guys always ask, so let's go ahead and let's talk a little bit about some of the things that I have on this rifle and how I have it set up. So first off, we have a PEC-15 up top. A PEC-15 is an IR laser illuminator um, that allows me to fire when uh, under night vision, right? So we have that right up top there. Uh, that is connected to a Surefire dual pressure pad, back beam for the PEC-15, front beam for the light. The light here is an Arasaka 600 series. It is on one of their new, uh, I believe it's SSM mount that puts it right up close to the PEC-15. That way when my fingers are kind of wrapping up, it kind of gets that light up and out of the way, which is what I prefer. Okay, so we have a pressure pad. I have that secured right here with a little zip tie right there to make sure the cords and wires aren't going everywhere. Moving back from there, we have an Aimpoint um, Comp M5S, uh, one of the newer Aimpoints. I'm gonna be doing a review on that later. And then as far as slings go, we have a Haley Strategic sling. I'm a big fan of those. I use a variety of slings, including Haley Strategic and Ferro Concepts. So very good sling company. So a very good sling from a great company, from a great dad. All right, and then of course we have magazines. So this magazine is an EPM. A lot of people have asked me what magazine is. It's an enhanced performance magazine. They were designed specifically for M855A1 and some of the weird issues that you run into with that, uh, that projectile and the kind of the havoc that, that it can wreak on M4 feed ramps. So with all those things being said, we have the LMT rifle, awesome design, Mars lower, M lock upper, 11 and a half inch barrel. I love this thing. I'm gonna be shooting this a lot more in videos to come, especially for the Aimpoint Comp M5S video. So, this rifle is sick. It looks cool, but you're not gonna look cool if you don't get training. Let's get out there and get some training, guys. Haley Strategic, Cogworks, Bear Solutions, Esoteric, the Direct Action Resource Center, Tony Cowden, Frank Proctor. All these gentlemen are giants in the training industry. I can't forget um, <laughs> Scott Jenilinski, uh, the Jedi out there. Um, uh, with the modern uh, samurai project. He also does some awesome stuff as well. These are all great guys to get training from, and I'd highly recommend that you check them out. Ladies, gentlemen, everyone else, Attack Helicopters, thank you for joining. I've got nothing else for you. Last thing I have for you is a little bit of life advice, and that is how you treat people who serve you food or who serve you, who you know check you out at the grocery line, how you treat these people says a lot about you as a person. Let that sink in. If you're an asshole to these people, the hell is wrong with you people? It, for me, that has always been the gauge of the type of person that you are. Somebody who treats a waiter like an asshole or somebody at the grocery store like an asshole or somebody just doing their job like an asshole is probably an asshole themselves. So if there's any bit of advice I can give you, be nice to those people. <laughs> They're having a day just like you. So be out there, spread a little kindness. That's been my message all along. We need a lot more of it in this community and less of us tearing each other apart because that gets us nowhere. Love you guys. Live a good life. And we'll see you next week.